Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Well, in this part of the series, first we'll learn how to build a custom carousel slider. Okay, well, now to do that, first we have to understand how we are going to build it. So you see, you will have pictures like this, and the images will have dots like this. Okay, well, of course, I don't have the images yet here. I only have the first one, but don't worry, I'll take care of them later. So now here, we want to have these dots and we also want to have this text and we'd be able to slide through them and the dot would show the corresponding slide like that okay so that's one thing we need to know and second other thing that we need to know the layout of this page so the layout of this page is like this so this whole page while well, it will have a background image so actually background image would be moving all right well Apart from that, other layout stays the same. Well, now this section over here, this would be a row. And in the row, we'll have children. Uh, so the first child would be a column. And this would be our second child. And that would be a column as well. Okay. So first, we'll have a background image. And background image will have row as a child. And within the row, we'll have children. So the first child would be this column and second child would be this column okay so anyway now to do that first what we'll do we'll come over here and create a new folder and we'll call it pages and within it we want to save our uh, dart classes or files now within it we'll call create a new file and we'll call it welcome page dot dart okay well this page would be our custom slider or custom carousel slider okay all right so just now we talked about it now this slider would be a stateful class so we'll do stful and within this we'd be able to build a boiler template of this class now the class name would be welcome page because our custom carousel slider would be shown as a welcome page of course you can use it anywhere you want if you understand how it works the principle is same anyway so now here within it we need to import some of the classes that's what we'll do first okay now over here we don't want to use container first we want to return a scaffold because within it we'll use um, other sections like body and other properties okay all right now scaffold should return a body so we'll use the body property now here because we want to create a slider so now they should slide like this and to do that we can use one customized one one function in flutter or constructor that's called page view builder that's what we'd be using so here we'll call page view dot builder this one okay now over here i'll close this so now any kind of builder in flutter if you know any kind of builder that takes two parameters so first one is the context so we'll have the default context so that's what it means for and in this case the second parameter for this builder is index okay yeah so that's what we are going to do and that's what we wrote so page view dot builder would help us to slide okay that's the main purpose of this constructor or widget okay because of this we'll be able to slide hopefully it makes sense okay and we also want to uh, specify the scroll direction because i think in default it scrolls left and right but we want it to scroll up and down of course you can scroll left and right but your images has to be a bit different in this case so anyway now here uh, i'll do scroll direction scroll direction oh sorry so here over here i would do i would use the property called scroll direction and axis dot vertical okay all right 
And for now, we'll use the three images for our uh, carousel slider. So I would do item count three. All right, now over here. So you are returning, you want to return a function because of this one. So page builder should return a function. So that's what we are going to do. Or actually a widget, it should return a widget or a function that returns the widget. So that's what we're going to do over here. Well, now, first thing we want to return over here is a container. Okay, so your return statement, so we need this one. Now think about this container. So this container should hold these images and everything else inside of this. Okay, so the container should have maximum width and height because we want it to occupy the whole screen. Okay, well now to do that, we can use the width as the maximum width. So in Flatter, we can use max finite. It will take maximum width for the screen. And the same for height, okay? So we do double dot max infinite. Okay, well, we are almost done. I mean, with the first part, like showing the images. Okay, now here, uh, what do we want to do? Here we want to show the image. Well, within container, if you want to show the image, you need box decoration. That's what we will do. Okay, and now box decoration has image property. And it takes the decoration image property and then within it one second image now here we do asset image to show the image now the images are where well now the images if you downloaded the code from the link so you should have images in your IMG folder okay well this three images okay but we want to define them at the top first okay go over here Okay, we don't want to read directly from the asset folder, but from here as a list. So we'll declare here list images. Okay. So like this. So we'll make image list and within the list we'll mention the image names. So let's go ahead and do it. Welcome one.png. Okay, well to be quick, I'll just copy paste them. So now here, welcome to and welcome three. Okay, so we have this image list over here. Now here we can loop through this list. Okay, how to do that? So we can just put plus and images. Now because page view builder has index and it will run three times, it will run from index zero to two. So we can specify the index over here. So we do index. Okay, now the error should be gone. And in fact, here you can also do images.length. So images is a list, so dot length would give us the actual length. Okay, all right. So, well, so far so good. Now, what we could do, we could come over here, and now instead of container, we can return as the home our welcome page. Okay. Now we need to import it. I think it's auto imported at the top, as you can see. All right, okay, cool. So now this is the time, go ahead and run it. Okay, well, it's starting. All right, our image is over here, it showed up. Well, now what we could do here, well, now we want image to take the whole screen, both width and height. Well, for this property, for this one, we can use another property within decoration image that's called fit okay and we do box fit dot cover using this one it will cover the whole screen okay now in fact your slider is ready as you can see okay it's a beautiful slider but yet very simple well the next thing we see we want to see how to put those dots as well as the text on the slider okay so that's what we want to do and we said that those text and dots would be children of this container or part of this image. So this is more like a background image now. Well, if it's a background image, so it can have child because this is in the background image. So within container, we'll define here child. Okay, now within child, we'll have another container. Well, using container, 
Uh, the benefit is you can specify margin and padding. So that's what I like about container. It's pretty useful, okay? So first we want to put our text over here, okay? All right, so now it should have certain distance from the top and the left side, okay? So for this one, we can do margin and const edge inserts only and the top 150, so top 150, so left 20 and right 20 for now, okay? All right, so next we want to define a row over here as a child of this container. So we do row, row text children, we know that. So within it, now here we'll have a, a column. So first column would show the text we saw early over here. Okay, so here we do column. Okay, and once again, column text children. Okay, all right. Now, the first thing if you saw, excuse me. So if you saw, we'll have this text, right? We'll have this text. So now we want to make a reusable text so that we would be able to use everywhere in our app. So we want to represent our text as a widget, okay? So here, I'll go ahead and create a new folder and I'll call it widgets and within it, here I'll create a file, we'll call it app text.dart. Okay. And well now here you see we have pretty much three types of text, very bold, little bold, and ordinary text. Also, this is for ordinary text. Well, the first one is for the bold. So here we're going to create another file and we'll call it uh, app large text dot dart okay so first we want to work with this this extra large bold text so first here we want to create a stateless class so you do stateless this one and we'll call it app large text and now we need to have some parameters. The file or the class will call this one. It will pass down some default parameters or some parameters to it. And we want to receive them. What are they? Well, first one, definitely the text size. Okay. All right. So we do int size. And then what else? The text itself. So final string text. And what else? Uh, we also want color. Okay. All right, well, so we do color, final color, color. Uh, well, for now, they're good enough. And now here, instead of returning a container, we want to return a text. And we also need this uh, Cupertino library or package. All right, now here within the text itself, we want to use the text, the one we passed down from another class. And I think we need to remove this and put this field over here. Now error should be gone, but of course we also need to put other fields uh, properly, like require. Okay, and we also need one for size. So we do this dot size, and it would ask you to put a required cure in front of it, and the error should be gone now. So so far we are pretty good. So now we'll receive color for it. So here we want to do text style. So you do style, text style. Now here the text style definitely the first one is say uh, color. So color is whatever color you pass down. This color over here. And font size. So well now whatever the size you pass okay now for font size actually we can also use a default one say so size is 30 so this is a default one now here we need to remove this one because it's a default one okay it is already given so it's not required okay 
Now here for the color actually we can also change this one. So if the color is given we'll use that color otherwise we'll use colors.black. If color is not given we'll use a black color. Okay all right. Of course uh, maybe we need to change the style here because it's not int it's a double the size. Okay now the error is gone. Okay well that's it. And what else? We also want it to be bold. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we do font, font weight, font weight bold. So for large X app text, app large text, we'll have bold. Okay, all right. So now it already became reusable. So what we could do, we can just come over here and call this app large text. So here we do app large text. You'll see it's already there. Now we want to use the first one. You see it hops, uh, shows you the parameter. Okay, so only required one is the text, this one. So what we could do, we can pass here trips, okay? Now, it could be very beautiful now. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, it's there. Beautiful. So, because it's a reusable, so just as a demonstration purpose, you can use it again and again. Now, here you can say discover. And within it, you can also use, say, color. Okay. So, you can do colors dot, say, red. All right now oh, it's there well so it's reusable but we don't want to use it this one now okay so so far so good with the app large text but as you can see in the slider we also want another text like this so what I'm planning over here this two text will be pretty much using the same widget so we'll be built only one widget for them and we'll reuse okay yeah so how to do that? So here, this is our app text. Now, actually, we can copy all of them from here. And we'll make a slight difference. Instead of calling app large text, here we'll call app text, okay? All right. Now, of course, here, the default size, we don't want 30, we want it to be 16. Okay, we don't want it that big. Okay, and the default color is, well, we can have a, a different kind of default color. So black mm, 54, this one, a bit different. Okay, so that's it. And we also don't want it to be bold. So we'll take it out. Now, because we already built one, so this one becomes also easier. Okay, now we can use this one over here. So here we do app text. Okay, this one. Now here the text will pass mountain. And over here, we also want a size for it. For this one, the default size is 16 if you come over here. But from the picture you can see they have the same size so here we'll do say 30 okay and the color is a bit different okay but we already have a default color this one so we'll use the default color now let's go ahead and run it and see our application yeah it's there okay now here we want to align them over here so how to do that so over here we'll call it uh, cross axis alignment this property so you do cross axis alignment dot start so now it'll align them the beautiful thing about this is that now you can use this one this one over here for this as well so this text they are all reusable now we'll be using the same class we created for this one now one thing, you see that it has, uh, from here, it's not going there, it's cutting off, it's going to the next line. So because of this one, we need to create a container and within container we'll use this 
text app text okay so here we do container and now why we are using container because we want to specifically mention the width because if it's more than 250 we want to fall back to a next line okay apart from that everything else should stay the fine now here we'll have this child and our child would be text what text this app text that we created early okay now here it takes parameter argument actually so the first one is a text we know that if you hover over on it so we have this text so here we would say mountain hikes give you an incredible sense of freedom along with endurance endurance test okay perfect so what we could do we could go ahead and check it out right away oh it's there pretty much well it's already looking like the way we want but of course we need to work on it more and here we want to have color and we want to use app colors dot text color well now app colors this file we need to import it and we do text color 2 now what is this app color where is this coming from actually it's coming from here app colors so text color 2 so it's in your downloaded folder so go ahead and check it anyway so now it's there so now let's save it okay so the color changed a little bit now here we also want to change the text size so you do size say 14 okay so it's much smaller but now the slider if you see they have a bit of distance so that's what we want to do now and it's pretty easy so over here we we'll do sized box okay and we can do say height say 20 no if you see well it's beautiful right so our slider is already working if you take a look but of course you can also change this text along with the slider that would be pretty easy if you want to do that you can declare another list of text over here different kind of text if you want for the headline for the small lines okay and you can change them as you want how to change it it's pretty easy just here like this over here okay over here you can just go through the index like if you have text a list say a list called a text if you declare a text over here say list text so here you'll have some text based on uh, whatever text you want so over here what it will do each of them you can access them like text index like this text index okay and just to remove this part and you should be good to go but we don't want to do that now okay so we'll skip this part yeah so the slider is already there and it's pretty good okay yes next we'll see how to create this button okay well now for this button we also want this button to be reusable okay all right well because of that one now over here we'll come over here and create a button now we just we not only want this a reusable button we also want it to be responsive okay so that's why we'll call it responsive button dot dart So to do that, first I'll create a stateless class over here and I'll call it responsive button. Okay. Now over here we need to import some of the default packages or libraries and we should be good to go. Now here think about it. 
So this button, what do you want? Well, now we want this button to be responsive in a sense that the same button we want to use here and here. Now, as you see, while well, their background color stays the same, so we are happy with the background color. Well, as well as uh, this icon doesn't change. So this icon is fixed. Background color is fixed. Only not fixed thing is this one and the size, okay? But you see, the height is fixed. So what do you want to pass to it? Well, you want to pass a Boolean variable to know if it is longer or shorter, okay? And uh, at the same time, if it's shorter, how short it is. So you want to pass the uh, width of it, okay? Well, if it's not shorter, if it's longer, actually it's taking all the available space, okay? So we want to pass two things, the width and a Boolean variable to know whether it's going to be a short one or a long one, okay? So that's what we want with this. Now, over here, what we'll do, here we'll create a variable, we'll call it bool is responsive. Okay, and now here we also want to pass uh, width, okay? So we'll call it double width, all right? Now, of course, we need to initialize over here. Let's see. Now, let's see. Well, now we also want this to be optional, okay? You may pass it or you may not pass it, okay? All right, and uh, here, let's see, is responsive, this dot is responsive. So the default value is false, okay? And we are good, good to go with this, all right? So now here, what do we want? Okay, the first one we want to have, okay, for now we want to have a width, all right? Okay, and uh, say the width, whatever the width you pass, we use that one, okay, and height. But now height, we want pretty fixed height, say 60, okay? And within it, we'll also show this image, and this text together but sometimes just the text sometimes image and text together if they're together so it's more like say in a row okay in a row property so here we'll have a child within the child we'll have row and it will take children okay now as you can see from the both buttons image is a must one so image is always there so while we use image.asset, this one, and within it, we'll pass the image. So what is the image over here we have? Well, we have an image which is called button one. So that's what we want to use. Okay. So here, what do you want to do? So here we want to create uh, the button name, button one.png, and we should be good to go, all right? Okay, and uh, yeah, so th th that's pretty much it, okay, for the button. Now, of course, as you can see, it will have some border, okay? So here, we can create border, we could do decoration, we do box decoration. Now here, we'll have border radius, and border radius dot circular, say 10 for now. Okay, and it will have a background color. So we use app colors dot main color. Okay, once again, this is coming from our color class over here. Okay. All right. Now with this, uh, we have a pretty 
interesting button so what we could do we could go ahead and check it run it all right and we want to see how it looks like so we'll put the button right below it and uh, now if you see over here there is a bit of distance so first we want to create a distance so we'll just copy paste this one put it over here and we'll have a extra height over here now we'll call it the button app large buttons or large text oh, sorry responsive buttons responsive buttons okay now over here even if we don't pass anything let's see what happens okay well it's there okay so the button already showed up that's pretty good and comforting so now here the well now we didn't pass any width over here but actually we can pass a width so now let's go ahead and pass a width over here and see say with um, 120 now let's go ahead and check it now it's a bit bigger right larger but now here the problem is it's not centered so we want it to be centered okay so now over here we can change it so we could do the main axis alignment main axis alignment dot center okay now it's centered okay well now we'll see how to draw these dots uh how to draw these three dots okay all right as we said early that uh, we need the two columns in the row okay well look at this now we already have the first column this column is showing this one so we want the other column over here okay all right so now we'll do that so we'll have column for dots okay now within it we'll use children okay and uh, well now we are not going to use this list operator over here to put children we'll use actually another uh, convenient function the function that shipped out of the box in flutter automatically for you like this one okay list generator is very useful so here we want to have three dots okay and now for each dot we want to return a container okay so that's all we want all right so we do return container but actually i don't like to like this i like this way because i can ha have a new line so i would do container and we need to have semicolon because we are returning now look at the picture so this picture over here if you see the dots well they have certain border okay yeah and the length well so that's what we need first we want to assign them width okay say for example width is 8 now if you look at the picture you see its height is changing based on the slide so we need to have a height but dynamic height right but anyway so for now we'll say put height 25 just so let's go ahead with this and see the result and then we want to have a decoration because we want to have border okay so we do border radius and we'll have uh, border radius 8 okay and we also need color so we do color and we use app colors app colors dot main color we saw early now over here we'll go ahead and run it okay so it, it's there right well now we want to push it to the end over here so now once again we can use this row property and we can use uh, a property called main access alignment and main access alignment dot space between so it will try to create all empty space between these two columns or these two widgets okay now it looks perfect of course here is this 20 because of this one all right yeah so now our dots are there but as you see it's not dynamic so first thing we want we want it to be dynamic change the color and also change its position well now because of this one we all get 25 height for our container but we want to be dynamic 
so as we slide over we want it to change the height okay and the current slide should be longer height how to do that now here we can use one of the properties that we already have so like item builder because of item builder keeps tracks of the index whatever the index we go through we can compare this index within this loop okay so in that case actually we can change the name index slider or index dots okay now over here we'll do a check so index equal index dots so this this index is for the dots and this index is for the slider and if they are equal then we'll use 25 otherwise we'll use just 8 okay so it looks like it's already working as you see but now they are too close to each other well in that case we can apply margin quickly we we'll do bottom margin say 8 all right well I guess it is too much so is okay now the other thing we need to do we need to change the color and if we do the color actually we can just like using this one we can still use this condition using iterary operator so index index dots if they're equal we'll use the main color otherwise we'll use a different color so we'll get from app colors dot main color with opacity okay we, we want to use a bit with opacity so if they are not equal they will have a little bit different color as you see now so pretty pretty good right so with this we are pretty much done with our uh, custom slider okay all right well next we'll see how to use how to build this page okay this one